Ever pondered why species never stop evolving? Why is there this constant race to adapt and survive? You see, in the world of biological evolution, it's not just a simple case of survival of the fittest. It's more like an intense, never-ending relay race, where species are constantly passing the baton of adaptation and survival to their next generation. This is where the Red Queen hypothesis comes into play. Named after a character from Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, the Red Queen is a metaphor for the relentless pursuit of evolution. In the novel, The Red Queen tells Alice, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. Similarly, in the world of biology, species must continuously evolve just to maintain their existence. The Red Queen hypothesis suggests that the evolutionary race is not against a static environment, but against a dynamic and ever-changing ecosystem. It's a competitive co-evolution, where one species' advancements could mean a disadvantage for another, triggering an endless cycle of adaptation and counter-adaptation. Take, for instance, the predator-prey relationship. If a predator evolves to run faster, the prey must also evolve to match that speed or risk extinction. But it doesn't stop there. If the prey evolves to become faster or more elusive, the predator then has to adapt again to catch up, this metaphorical race is not just about speed or strength, it's about survival. It's about developing new ways to resist diseases, find food, or reproduce. It's about staying one step ahead in the game of life. But here's the kicker, there's no finish line in this race, there's no ultimate winner in evolution, it's a continuous, relentless pursuit, a battle of adaptation and survival. The Red Queen hypothesis is an intriguing concept, but does it hold water in the real world? Well, let's dive deeper and explore how this hypothesis plays out in nature. From parasites and their hosts, to the plant world, the Red Queen's influence is widespread and profound. Stay tuned as we unravel the fascinating dynamics of this evolutionary race. Consider the constant battle between parasites and their hosts, a classic example of the Red Queen hypothesis at play. This scenario is akin to a never-ending chess game, where each player continually adapts to outwit the other. The world of parasites and their hosts is a fascinating one, filled with intricate strategies and countermeasures. On one side, we have the parasites. These are organisms that survive by invading host bodies, commandeering resources, and causing harm in the process. To do this effectively, they must continually adapt and evolve, honing their skills to better infect their hosts. On the flip side, we have the hosts. These are the organisms that are under constant siege from parasites. They too must adapt and evolve, developing new defenses to resist these invasions. It's an eternal dance of adapt and counter-adapt, each side striving to gain the upper hand, but never quite achieving it. A compelling example of this evolutionary tug-of-war can be found in the relationship between the water flea, Daphnia, and its parasites. Daphnia, these tiny crustaceans, are often plagued by a variety of parasites. These parasites adapt to better infect Daphnia, developing strategies to overcome the flea's defenses. But Daphnia are not passive victims. They too are evolving, developing new defenses to resist these infections. For instance, some Daphnia have evolved armor-like carapaces, or outer shells, that make it harder for parasites to invade. Others have developed the ability to produce offspring with greater genetic diversity, increasing the chances that some will be resistant to the parasites. So the cycle continues. The parasites adapt to overcome the new defenses, and the Daphnia respond by evolving yet more sophisticated defenses. Each side is constantly adapting, constantly evolving, in a race that never ends. Indeed, the Daphnia and its parasites are in a constant evolutionary tug of war, a perfect illustration of the Red Queen hypothesis. This is the essence of the Red Queen's world, a world where standing still is not an option, where one must continually adapt to survive. Let's wander from the animal kingdom into the realm of plants. Do they too play this evolutionary chess game? You might think plants are passive players in the game of life, but you'd be mistaken. Like animals, plants are engaged in a relentless tug of war with their adversaries, which often come in the form of pests. This constant battle in the plant world is another perfect example of the Red Queen hypothesis in action. 
Consider this. Plants can't run away from their enemies, they are rooted in place literally, so over time they've evolved different strategies to protect themselves. One such strategy is the production of toxins, chemical substances that are harmful or deadly to the pests that plague them. Take the example of the common milkweed plant. It produces a toxic sap to deter herbivores, but it's not just any toxin. It's a specific toxin that targets monarch caterpillars, one of the milkweed's primary pests. This toxin is so potent that it can kill or stunt the growth of these caterpillars. But evolution is a two-way street. Just as the milkweed has evolved to produce a potent toxin, the monarch caterpillar has evolved to resist it. In fact, not only can these caterpillars tolerate the toxin, but they also sequester it in their bodies and use it as a defense mechanism against their own predators. This is the Red Queen at work, a never-ending race where both the plant and the pest must continuously adapt to keep up with each other. The milkweed develops new toxins, the monarch caterpillar evolves new resistances, and the cycle continues, with neither side ever gaining a permanent upper hand. This evolutionary arms race isn't limited to just milkweeds and monarch caterpillars. It's a pattern that repeats itself across the plant kingdom, from the tallest trees to the smallest herbs. Every plant and its pests are locked in this perpetual dance of adaptation and counteradaptation. So, we see that the Red Queen hypothesis applies equally to the plant world, creating a never-ending cycle of adaptation. So, what does this constant race mean for the future of species, including our own? The Red Queen hypothesis has significant implications for how we understand and respond to the ongoing challenges of biodiversity and climate change. To start with, the Red Queen hypothesis underscores the critical importance of biodiversity. This is not a mere beauty contest where the most colorful or exotic species win. Instead, it's about the survival of the fittest, the most adaptable. Each species, in its own unique way, contributes to the overall health and resilience of our ecosystems. When biodiversity is high, it means there are more solutions to the problems that nature throws at us. It's like having a toolbox filled with a variety of tools, ready to fix whatever breaks down. Now let's consider climate change. As our planet warms, the race for survival becomes even more intense. Species that can't keep up with the pace of change, that can't adapt quickly enough, risk extinction. The Red Queen hypothesis suggests that it's not just about the survival of the fittest, but the survival of the quickest, too. But it's not all doom and gloom. The Red Queen also provides us with a beacon of hope. It reminds us that life is inherently adaptable, that evolution has equipped us with the tools to face challenges head-on. For our own species, this might mean developing new technologies, changing our behaviors, or finding ways to mitigate the impacts of climate change. In essence, the Red Queen hypothesis offers a unique lens through which we can view the world. It reframes our understanding of life not as a static state, but as a dynamic process of continuous adaptation. It's a reminder that life, in all its forms, is a relentless marathon runner, always moving, always evolving, never resting. The Red Queen hypothesis paints a picture of life as a constant struggle for survival, a race with no finish line. But remember, in this race, it's not about crossing the finish line first, but about staying in the game, constantly adapting, and never giving up. The Red Queen hypothesis, a fascinating concept, isn't it? As we've journeyed through this exploration, we've delved into the heart of the evolutionary race. We've seen how species, like those in the parasite host tug of war, are engaged in a relentless cycle of adaptation and counter-adaptation, a seemingly endless chase with no finish line in sight. Our journey into the world of plants further underscored this point, revealing how the Red Queen hypothesis can shed light on the complex dynamics of plant-pollinator relationships. It's a constant struggle for survival, a race against time, and a testament to the relentless pace of evolution. This theory is more than just an intriguing notion. It's a vital lens through which we can understand the intricacies of evolution and how species adapt and change over time. It reminds us of the ceaseless march of progress, the never-ending dance of life on this planet. 
in the grand scheme of evolution, perhaps we are all like Alice, running as fast as we can just to stay in place.